Helen Clitheroe and I'm here with Kira McGeehan and we're going to talk a little bit about being coached versus being self-coached. A lot changed and not a lot changed. I think that's probably the sign of a good coach that whenever you took over it was like what, April? Yeah. April going into a really big summer. Um, so obviously you were not going to change a, a whole lot in that complete build up into the summer because it was so close. Um, and you'd be able to speak more about this, but I know that you went through my training peaks. You looked at my past training, you chatted to Steve about what worked for me. Um, and for me personally, I think that's something that I took a lot of um, faith from because you had invested in looking to see what worked for me. Um, I personally, and you've realized that, I'm not an athlete that reflects back an awful lot. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So uh, like for any of the listeners, like I'm not really a person who knows exactly the session I did this time last year. And I've told you that. So like I turn to you to ask like, is this good? Yeah. And I think that's that shows the difference. Like for someone like Kira, being self-coached probably wouldn't work at all because you like to know the plan, but not to know too much about it. You like to just be told what to do or for the coach to sort of, lead that mm -hmm. um, whereas you know some people if they prefer to coach themselves they maybe go down a track that's not always the right one for them and I think having a coach like so I've just come on this year to um, coach Kira and to, like like you said respected what's been been done before obviously I have my own ideas and philosophies but we have I have quite similar philosophy as a coach to Kira's previous coach so I think that that really helped in this sort of transition, especially at this like performance level um, of training and athletics that we're we're working in. And I think you know that's having that accountability to work with a coach can really help some athletes. And most athletes at at this level um, do have a coach, but there are a few that self coach. Yeah. So I think even within our team, the dynamic is very different because you look at. Within Team New Balance Manchester, we have like a spectrum. So like Izzy's the youngest member of the team and I feel like she'll look to you for a lot of that advice. Funnily, I'm the oldest member of the team now and I'm just like that. I like look yeah. to you for all that advice. But then you take somebody like Yip, who um, Yip will know like the exact split she did in this session three years previous. She'll know her body temperature that day and like what the weather forecast was and it's all written down yeah. and she can't switch that off. So yeah, I find... So so as a coach with an athlete like Yip Rustenberg, um, I know that it has to be a, a collaboration and a discussion and a, we, to, to be fair, we have quite similar thoughts, mm -hmm. so that works very well. So with someone like um, Yip, who wants, needs a coach, but also has quite a lot of input in what, what they do in the, in the plan and ha wants to have a discussion about it, then as, that's my job to sort of see that and to yeah. respect that that's how that athlete ticks yeah and then with you I know that you don't really want to know too much it's like <laughs> tell me what I'm doing today <laughs> what do is it, it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I think that's interesting because for Yippy needs like that collaborate collaboration whenever it comes to the whole thing I think I very much trust you completely with my program and I'll feedback if I'm tired and things like that like we obviously do discuss that but I think a lot that you've brought to me this year and like we sat down after the the whole summer and we had the chat like two silver medals Commonwealths and Europeans, two big Diamond League races, one with a 356 and coming second at the Diamond League was, Diamond League final was amazing. And we sat down and we were like, like a lot of that was a lot of the work that I've done previously because as an athlete you have stuff banked. But I said to, to you, Helen, and you got a little emotional, that like um, I couldn't have done that without you. So I could have done the exact same build up but the impact you had on me as an athlete was something that really helped get that performance out so then we try to figure out what that was yeah. and I think you give me a lot of um autonomy over my own mindset going into your race yeah so that's one thing that I noticed when I started working with Kira was that you maybe have been so used to sort of not having a, a say but I, I'm and I'm looking at you thinking wow this girl's been you know, she's been a world junior medalist. She's had such a massive experience in the sport. Why would you not want to drive your future? So I, I see that my job as a coach is to sort of help Kira drive her own destiny and because it's your career, not mine. Yeah. So that's, you know, and I think that's worked quite well. And I think it's given you that sort of drive to achieve what you've achieved this, this year or last year. Yeah. Um, 
It was interesting because I, because that autonomy over that um, part of it and you giving me that confidence in my knowledge and my ability, because like you're obviously an athlete that I looked up to hugely. So then I'm like, oh wow, she's like telling me, well, what, why are you turning to me for all of this? Like you have a wealth of knowledge. And so then that comes that conversation between like self-coaching and having somebody coach you because <clears throat> in many ways, and Steve would have said this, if you're a good coach, you do yourself out of a, business, a job yeah. because you want to put us in a place that we actually can nearly do it all on our own. Um, and I feel like I could, if you if you were away, I could probably write a program. I could say, okay, I pretty much know what to do. I could look back and reflect and I could write a very good yeah. program. The thing is, I don't want to. I really enjoy coming to training, turning to you and putting all of that on you. Like the pressure of getting my training plan right, sorry, Helen, is all on you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is a collaboration because we'll talk. It's all on you. It's all on me. Yeah. <laughs> so it is that like that conversation. So that's an interesting piece that, you know, self-coached or coached by somebody. An awful lot of it is self-coaching. Yeah. Like I have to be there on my own step foot on the track. And even in the session and on the in the race day, it's all me. Yeah. But I know that you're there in my corner to turn to if I'm in doubt in, in a rep if I'm in doubt in like just normal life, I'm feeling tired, I need a chat, if my head's a little wobbly, going into a race that I can have that. So for me, that's why I've always valued having a coach. Yeah, but I'd say one, one reason to have a coach, and this is from my experience as an athlete as well, is the coach keeps you from doing something stupid. You know, so often as an athlete, you're, you know, it's always, you wanna do more, you wanna, you run faster, you want to do more miles, and sometimes it, the coach who says, hang on a minute, you know, Bring I always say you, you do everything for a reason. Every day is, you know, just because the week adds up to a certain volume of mileage doesn't mean it's right the right thing to do. It's how you feel on that day and what you're trying to achieve on that day. So, you know, I think that's one big reason, a uh, big thing for a coach is to sort of stop athletes overdoing things and to keep it, you know, it's a fine line between not training hard enough and, and overdoing it. We're sort of treading that line quite often, aren't we? Yeah. As, at this level of, of uh, athletics. And the other thing I think in terms of sort of racing and strategy is you have that um, discussion. Like it's like for me and you will, I'll always say to you before a race, what do you think you should do? And then yeah. we'll talk about many, many scenarios of what yeah. might happen in a competition. Um, but it's sort of, I like, that's driven by you, mm -hmm. um, but I'm there to sort of go, what about this, what about that? Yeah. You know, what if this happens, what will you do? If this happens, what will you do? And I think that's that's quite a nice thing to have with a coach as well, going into a competition, whether it's a road race, a track race, cross country, um, is sort of discussing many the many scenarios that might happen and what you'll do, what you need to do to get your best result. Yeah, you're nearly like a sounding board in that, yeah, yeah. that moment, because I'll put forward, like maybe six things and you're like, that's all really good. That's good, that's good. You'll point out these things and you'll be like, maybe think of this scenario too. And like we had the discussion before Commonwealth Games and we chatted about what we were gonna do. And I said, I want to go for gold. And I knew it was gonna be hard because Laura's in amazing shape. And you shared your experience, which is also a nice thing because whenever you have a coach, you're, I'm coming forward with my wealth of knowledge. You're coming forward with yours. I personally am always like, those two brains mm -hmm. are better than one for me personally. And like you shared your experience of going out and you were like, I went, I put myself out there. I came forth, but I wouldn't have changed it. Wouldn't yeah. have changed going out there. And that, I knew that was the risk for me going in, but we were like, we've committed, we're gonna do it. Cause it's either try for gold and we'll see what happens or just battle for third. And yeah. like, with no interest now, we're like, we want to go out and go, go hard to go home. Um, but yeah, it's it's like an interesting little little dynamic, and I know like my own boyfriend self coached for a long time, and like observing from the sideline, um, I often wondered like like you said, I think I was like I think he's training himself too hard a lot of the time, because at times you just rein us in. <clears throat> in camp, I heard you say you can't play catch up. So say somebody missed a yeah. missed a training session, they were feeling a bit tired that day, they did like one less run and they were looking for some extra miles the next day, and you were like, that's not the game we're playing here. Yeah, that's so true, actually. So, so if you're an athlete who has a, a plan, that either you've written yourself or the coach has written, sometimes you have to deviate from that plan. And I rip the, I rip the training plan up so many times, you know, and I am very reactive to what's happened that day or that week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I don't reveal what we're doing until the Sunday before the next week because often it's changed yeah. so many times and depending on how the, how the sessions have gone that week, if there's a competition coming up, 
if somebody's feeling unwell and they're the things that sort of I can react to whereas sometimes like you say if you've got a plan that's been written either by yourself or a coach sometimes you just stick to it mm -hmm. you're like I can't deviate from this and that's when you end up being sick and not having a rest day and then you're sick for three weeks. Yeah, not listening to your body. Exactly, and sort of trying to, that's a massive thing, is sort of trying to be in tune with your body and sometimes it, you need the coach, you need that permission almost to yeah. to say I'm tired and, the, and if the coach goes, do you know what, let's just back this off, then yeah. you feel okay about it. If you're making that decision yourself, sometimes it's, you feel like you've, you've skived the, yeah. the run or you've, you know, you've skipped something, whereas actually it's the right thing to do on that day, mm -hmm. you know. It's hard to be objective when it's yourself, but you can look at me and say, no, this is the smart decision. And whenever you back that up, I'm like, okay, Helen thinks that's the case. Okay. <laughs>
there's even there's the community groups have that sort of expertise within within it so that you can tap into even if it's not like a set training plan it might be that you just go and meet meet these people once a week or something yeah and you know it's absolutely brilliant there's like 60 odd people just meet up on a wednesday morning and go for a jog <laughs> uh, and have so much banter i think that's really good too that like yeah. that's that's as much about the running community as as going out and achieving pbs and winning medals and and achieving all those things and i think like that that fact as well like some people are suited to self-coach because some people's lives aren't suited to meeting people maybe they're really busy and they're like I can only fit in at this and it's quite sporadic mm. and they might find that they enjoy the challenge themselves so it's always that difficulty like everybody's different some people enjoy challenging themselves like I personally love having a group love having a person to chat to you about it um so yeah there's so many options out there you can stay <laughs> <laughs> coach <laughs> So I hope you've enjoyed our conversation today. Maybe it's taught you a few things and enlightened you a little on the, the coach self coach dynamic. I personally really enjoy having my coach. I'm really looking forward to many years ahead with Helen at my side. Um, you might feel the same and there's many options out there or you might like to be self coached and you might want to explore that. Um, if you liked our conversation, make sure to like and subscribe and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more. <laughs>